Hey, hi everyone. Hey, good morning, good afternoon, uh, whatever you are. Thanks very much for joining us on this first day uh, well, the Community Tech Talk. Uh, we'll be running these every two weeks and we want to keep these interactive. Uh, these are uh, an opportunity for us to engage meet uh, our community uh, peers, uh, whether a data scientist, MLE or your DevOps, you know, whatever your, your background is, uh, you know. What stage you are in your career, if you're higher ed uh, through to a seasoned uh, veteran uh, uh, like me, uh, uh, yeah, my daughter called the old geezer. But uh, essentially, we want to make this uh, an all-encompassing place for anyone uh, in the community uh, to you know, come, learn, uh, engage with us, chat to us, tell us about your experiences and AI and ML projects. Uh, and uh, uh, in questions that you have, and hopefully, and maybe not on this one, but uh, in future sessions, we can uh, hopefully uh, you know answer those questions and get to know each other. So today, on the first one, uh, we are going to go through uh, using Python virtual environments with Jupyter notebooks, and so we'll cover a few things here uh, with uh, you know using Conda to create that virtual environment, uh, adding py Python libraries to the environment. And also using the virtual environment in a Jupyter notebook. And then we'll, we'll keep this open for discussions and questions as well. And uh, we're also recording uh, and we'll put this up onto our YouTube channel. And uh, you can see this uh, recording, you can revisit this, as well as many other recordings that we have up there. We have a lot of other tutorials and content as well as uh, uh, our uh, great doc site uh, that you can go to and uh, you can uh, you know get our free community edition and you can run through these tutorials yourself at your own pace for your own learning. My name is Martin Bald. I am the Senior Community Manager at Wallaroo. And so uh, as I've probably uh, met me, some of you uh, through previous roles at conferences and uh, talks and sessions, uh, and uh, if you're also a member of the ML Ops community, I uh, am a part of that as well. So I, uh, you know, love to love to engage with the community and uh, hear about you know these stories. So uh, we're not going to kill you with slides today. Uh, there is only one other slide with resources that I have. But uh, what I'll do now is going to hand it over to my colleague uh, John Hanserick, and uh, John will then take us through uh, the the environment and uh, show us uh, using these uh, Python virtual environments with uh, Jupyter notebooks. And so uh, over to you, John. All right. Uh, so yes, hi everybody. Uh, I'm John Hansrick, uh, sitting out here today with Martin and uh, I've got some Joey's in the background here just to say hello and, and uh, share the experience, but we'll let them go have some breaks here. So uh, I'm the senior technical writer at Wallaroo. Uh, basically that means I get to listen to people way smarter than myself and then write about how they do what they do. So whether that's you know, uh, running inferences, how to install Wallaroo in our in this case, how to install the SDKs. We're gonna like show real quick using the the these virtual environment situations. Uh, that is basically my role is taking all that and translating it from uh from engineering into English. So what we're gonna be showing today, and let me just kind of go through a quick outline here. I'll start sharing my screen. Move that over there. We don't need that. All right. So this is going to be a very, very quick lesson plan. Um, I do not confess to be a Python expert, but in my role of documentation and writing about these things, I tend to spend a lot of time building things up and breaking them down again and then doing that over and over to make sure that all the steps are correct from start to finish. So a lot of the times I rely on Python virtual environments to help me out. What that lets me do is, for the example we'll show here today, uh, suppose you're using a new library. They come with a new version of something and you don't want to break your old stuff that's running because it's running just fine as it is. But maybe this new li Python library has some new features, has new, new performance values, whatever that may be. So what you can do is instead of installing that library into your entire system, you can segment it off into a virtual environment. And that way it knows all these dependencies that have only the things it needs and goes from there. Uh, some of the reasons for using a virtual environment may be just restriction. Uh, I'm someone who likes to run the bare minimum of what I need for a program to run rather than everything in the kitchen sink, trying to reduce all that cruft and, and have to like. So using these virtual environments can help out. The tool we use today is Conda, uh, just because it's pretty well supported and, and convenient. 
So what we're going to do is kind of walk through a process of showing off how to use Conda to make a new environment and uh, show off what's inside of it. We're actually going to be making two. So this way I can show, uh, in my case, I'm testing out uh, the new wall root SDK that's coming out in about a couple, a couple of weeks. And I'm going to be using the old one as well. So I can kind of go bounce back and forth as I need to for what thing I'm documenting, whether it's the old version of things or it's the new hot stuff. So let's start off and show real quick uh, Conda. And most of the time you can install that if you're on Mac OS, if you're homebrew, uh, available at brew.sh. You can find it there, but most of the time you're going to be able to find Conda available on Linux, you know, any of your Unix platforms like that. I believe there's pretty sure there's version for Windows uh, akin to it. So Conda, for example, if you're using Brew, can just be installed like Brew install Conda, and then that's it. You're done. If you are a Brew.sh user, and now you're on Mac OS, that's great. Otherwise, uh, please Google how to install Conda on your system. So we're not going to go over how to install it; just use it a bit. So in my case, let's start off with with the beginning. So this is my current environment, and just going to show real quick down here. I've got my terminal set up, so it tells me what virtual environment I'm in. That's useful to me because I can see right away, what am I doing? And, and that way, if something doesn't work, I can be like, oh, I'm in the wrong environment or, or whatnot. And also just real quick, this is a sample Jupyter notebook. This is one of the ones on our Walroot Tutorials repository. And as you can see, it's gonna be pulling some different things. For example, this, the Walroot SDK. Now, right now I'm in my base, environment, which you can see right here. So this is Python 3.9.15. The base is like your default. And if I actually try to start this up, it's going to come back and say, I don't got wall ruined here. And that's fine. I don't want it in my base. I want to save it off. So I'll start doing some environment stuff. So the first thing, you can get a quick list of your environments in Conda, just with Conda environment list. And let me stretch this up a bit. So I've got these different ones for different things I'm testing out with. Uh, Arrow is a new feature in Walry that's coming that I'm testing out. Uh, this cool one is computer vision. It's about how to recognize objects using ML, uh, ML models and the like, and some other things like that. So these are all the environments I've got. Let's go ahead and make one. So the first I'm going to make, we're going to call it a uh, Pi SDK test. And what this is going to show is installing in my case, Wallaroo look from the, the PyPy environment and that we can segment off there. And I'm going to specify in the beginning, we want to use Python 3.8. No particular reason, but just to show that you can even specify that level of Python version if you should need to. So let's go ahead and make that up. And it comes back and says, okay, hey, uh, I'm going to have to install. All right, let's go to the top. First, it's say, hey, I'm going to pull your stuff over here. That's fine. Default, great. I'm going to make it Python 3.8. That's what I told you to do. This is, and as I do this, I'm going to go and install all these into your virtual environment so it runs. Go for it. All right, so then it's going to go out, grab the packages, whether they have to go get them for the internet, maybe I've got them cached locally. And then once that's done, we should be able to see, there we go. Now I'm still not in my environment yet. I'm still in base. If I actually want to go into my environment, I'll then use this command conda activate. You know, once I do, this thing tells me, okay, you're now in this environment. Now, if I wanted to, I can just leave that environment by saying conda deactivate. And I'll do that anyway, just to show an example of something. Let's take a quick look at what libraries are actually in my base system. And that way, as we move forward, we can see what's being changed. So you can either do a pip freeze, and that shows you Here's all the Python libraries and the version that's installed. You can also do conda list. And that gives you a very similar thing, just in a different format. So it's like, okay, here's all the cool things involved. All right, so let's go ahead and go back and conda activate and get back into it. All right, so suppose I'm doing some experiments. I'm Again, I'm going to test out the new Walry SDK versus the old. So I'm going to install some libraries. So let's install uh, the SciPy library. That's one that data scientists are going to need for, uh, I believe, PyTorch and the like. In this case, we're going to use the Conda installation feature. So some of these are in Conda Forge versus Conda. If you are unsure about which is which, you can just go into anaconda.org and search. So I can search for SciPy, and it comes back and says, oh, yeah, you install it. 
here's the command you're going to use. And then you can take a quick look about uh, other information, like the versions and the like, if you want to check and file and see, oh, okay, we're all these different versions. In my case, we're going to install version 1.8.1. Honestly, not really. Any reason, just an example to show you guys how to do it. So it tells me, okay, hey, I've got that. You want to install this version. To make that run, I need to install all of these things. I'm like, you know what? That's great. Let's go for it. Do your thing. So it's going to go ahead and do that. And then one of the nice things about Panda and Conda, pardon me, Conda and Pip, is that when you install a package in a version, it finds the correct dependencies for that. So in my case, because I'm installing 1.8.1 of SciPy, uh, it may need a specific version of uh, the NumPy uh, API in there. So in this case, it's getting 1.24.2. If I want the most recent version, it might have upgraded to something else. But again, the nice thing is that you don't have to worry about that too much. Nice people in the package repositories have done that. All right, so that's all done. So now if I go back and do another conda list, and we can compare. And in fact, I'm going to try this. This, this should work. I'm going to open up one more environment. And give it a second. Okay. So now if I'm in, which one I am? All right, cool. So this one is in base. So I do a conda list. You know, come back and say, all right, here's all your things. And if we scroll up, we'll probably notice that SciPy is not in there. So put it out one dot eight does zero. So we got a version there, it's not the same one. But now if I go back to my uh, where am I at in there? There we go. Did this one. We can scroll up, take a look at SciPy, and see, oh, all right, we're on one dot eight to one. So my base has a version of SciPy. My this particular Python virtual environment has another one. So now we can go back and forth between the two. Let me do one last thing, and then I'm going to install the Walru SDK from PyPy. So I can just say Walru. And if so, we can also use pip to install things in our virtual environment. So in this case, I'll use pip. And actually, uh, just for the specific release, because I like to install specific releases and not just say, give me the latest because you never know what's going to work or not. All right, so I'm telling you, all right, give me the Waller SDK, this specific version. You can see it's not in there yet. It's gonna go through. It's gonna do a little bit of stuff, making sure that all the dependencies are there. It's changing out my numpy, it looks like. Oh, oh that's interesting. So yeah, it's even uh, like I'm updating the uh, the SciPy version so it works with the correct version of the Waller SDK. All right, great. So now if I do another conda list, and we can see there's the Walru. And along the way, it also like, oh, hey, I need actually this version of SciPy instead of 1.8.1. That's fine. I, I agree with that. You do your thing. So the next question is, all right, how do I get from there into my Jupyter Notebook? So at the moment, if I go into my Jupyter Notebook and I say, hey, show me my environments, I've got all the stuff out there, uh, but I want to make sure I've got the right one. So one of the things you can do, let me scroll down a bit. Uh, in this environment, we're going to install IPy kernel, and that lets us add these kernels into the Jupyter Notebook repository so we can kind of see what's going on. It's like, okay, once again, I need to install these things. And it'll do so. Let me get this ready while we're waiting. All right. So now it's done. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to officially add that kernel into a space where Jupyter Notebook can see it. So you know, our environment is Pi SDK test. So we'll just add that in as a kernel for our IPython and there we go. All right, so now if I come back and say, great, we know we're going to be in base, we want to be in Pi SDK test. We can just search for it, there it is. So now if I run the same command I just did earlier, but in this new in this new uh, virtual environment. Comes along, it runs. Link up all the things. 
And there we go. And I can verify what version am I on? It's like, oh yeah, you're on Wallaroo version 22.4.0. That's exactly what I wanted. For now, let's start this up again. So let's suppose I've got the situation where I have a wheel file that someone has given me with the new version of the DK. So I need to install this manually. And I don't want it to be clobbering my old environments because you know, I've got notebooks and things are already in there. They're running well. So we're going to set up a new piece with a new environment using that separate version of the SDK. So we're just going to run through this a little bit faster this time. A similar process. Call this the local SDK test. It's going to create all these things. And actually, let me, before I do that, make sure I'm in the right... Okay, forgot to get conda deactivate. So this is going to take me out of that environment. There we go. And back to where I want to be. So let me do that one more time. We'll call this local SDK test is our environment. We'll update the, ver the version of Python to 3.9. Again, just because I want to. And then once that's done... All right, cool. So we'll go ahead and go into that new environment. And this time I'm going to do a pip install. And this time I'm specifying a specific wheel. So this is the latest version of the Walrus SDK as of, I think, two days ago. So now I can do my documentation experiments and see what, what you know, all the things are working into like. So I'll say, all right, go ahead, go install that one. And again, it's going to go through grab the file, grab the dependencies it says it needs. And then when it's done, it'll be into my environment. Just wait most patiently for it to finish. There we go. I'm not gonna lie, Martin, I had a moment of nervousness. Live, live, live demos are always that. Something gonna go wrong this time? It, yeah, they are, John. It's, uh, but yeah, kudos for uh, putting yourself out there. <laughs> yeah, it works. Okay, so it went through again, installed all the things we needed to go through. Uh, I'm going to skip a lot of this and go right back into our IPy kernel again for this environment. Let's see, yep. And then once that's done, we'll add that kernel in our IPython sections, so that way our notebook can see it. Great. Added local SDK test. And there we go. All right. So before we had version 22.4, let's go ahead and I'm going to clear all the outputs real quick. We're going to select our new, there it is, local SDK test. Okay, it's all working again. So now, when I run these two commands, we'll run them side by side. By the way, this does not speed up the process, it's just a me thing. My dad used to have a thing that if your computer didn't work, uh, go out to the car and shake a rubber chicken at it. I, I don't know why that was his advice, but it's, he seemed to think it worked. But either way, so now you can see we are on a different version entire of, of, uh, of uh, the Walrus SDK. So I can jump back and forth all day long. So if you're using Walrus, for example, you can go to the Jupyter Hub service that's included with the software itself. And that's over, I've got that running over here, for example, so I can run the, run things as much as I want. I can go to local SDK, and in my case, I can put in a virtual environment and then run whatever version I like, and that way I can verify that all the things I've got running are going. In my case, now that I can document this new version and verify that all the things that are in there are actually there and how they work and all the new procedures, new calls, and uh, that is the excitement that is my life. And that said, uh, that's how to use virtual Python environments and how to bring them into your Jupyter Notebooks. So. Uh, if anyone have any, any questions on that or in our interest, uh, please feel free to let us know.
Martin, uh, I'll turn this back over to you. And Awesome. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. great demo. And uh, I mean, it's always great to see live demos uh, you know, in action. Uh, yeah, there's been certain Working. situations where we need to, you know, do the, um, you know, we do the can stuff, but I think that's what we're trying to get across here is, uh, you know, you know, making this a live interactive environment for folks. So uh, mm -hmm. thanks a lot, John. Appreciate it. Yeah, I think, uh, I, as I mentioned at the beginning, I so, saw, you know, we're a community manager. We're a Series A startup. And uh, essentially what our product does is we're that last mile of ML ops. And so if you are a data scientist or MLE or you're, uh, you know, managing or, or creating involved in any of ML projects or AI projects, and you struggle to get these uh, projects into production, that's where the Wallaroo product comes in. We can quickly help uh, provision those models uh, into uh, a working environment and get them into production. And then, you know, once they're in production, the work's not done uh, there. You know, you need to be able to have, you know, model insights and observability and all those capabilities a, to make sure that the models you are running in production are, uh, you know, doing what is expected of the business uh, and being able to monitor things like, you know, data drift. Uh, and uh, and then also, if you have other models, you want to make sure that, hey, can I, uh, can I compare this new model to the one that's in production? And you can do that through uh, technologies or, or methods such as A-B testing or shadow deploy. And those are all built in. Uh, to the product, and uh, and we have that free community edition. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the license does not expire, so there's no pressure for you to, you know, oh, I've got 30 days, you know, to use this, uh, or it expires, or it starts charging me money, or something like that. That's that's not the case here. And the other thing with the community edition, uh, and also the the Wallery product, is that, you know, whatever your skill set is, you know, we try and aim to to match the environment to your skill set. So. If you are familiar with UI, uh, we have the UI. If you're familiar with the SDK, uh, as John showed in Jupyter Notebooks, you know that uh, is uh, available to you as well. And if your company has made investments in other technologies that plug into uh, an MLOps environment, we have a host of APIs that expose uh, those applications. You can plug them in. So there's a lot of versatility there. And uh, the other component and uh, the DNA that the product was built on is a, a, a high, uh, you know, a, you know, a fast, robust compute engine for those inferences. Whether you're running, uh, you know, batch mode or whether you're running streaming mode, uh, the, the the scalability and the robustness in that compute engine is built into it. And so, uh, I encourage you if you want to download the, the community edition, uh, give it a try. And we've got a, a whole whack of uh, of uh, uh, you know, as I said, you know, videos. Uh, we also have some great documents and tutorials that uh, John uh, has uh, written and published uh, up to our docs.wallaroo uh, site as well. And, uh, and then, you know, you can check them out. And uh, please reach out to us. I'm on uh, the ML Ops Slack channel. Uh, you can reach me through community at wallaroo.ai uh, or, or check me out on LinkedIn as well. So uh, I just want to quick say, uh, hey, thanks very much, everyone. Uh, for joining us. As I said, we'll keep these going. And uh, this is our first one. Mm -hmm. And we'll keep these going every two weeks. We'll have a different topic. And I uh, look forward to seeing you on, on future sessions. Uh, thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye